Good afternoon. I hope everyone is doing well this day. Um, I hope that you've had a good week thus far. It is Thursday and I am going to be finishing up 2 Peter chapter 3, which is the last chapter. And I'm just going to complete the whole chapter today. So this will be today's video and Friday's video. So it says the day of the Lord is coming. And yes, it is. So chapter 3, verse 1. This is my second letter to you, dear friends. And in both of them, I have tried to stimulate your wholesome thinking and refresh your memory. I want you to remember what the holy prophets said long ago and what our Lord and Savior commanded through your apostles. So here he's stating uh, what is the directive and meaning of this you know, second letter to the church. And he wants to stimulate wholesome thinking and refresh their memory on what they've been told and what the prophets had said in the Old Testament. So it says, most importantly, I want to remind you that in the last days, scoffers will come, mocking the truth and following their own desires. They will say, what happened to the promise of Jesus coming again? From before the times of our ancestors, everything has remained the uh, same since the world was first created. So we definitely are living in a time of scoffers and mockers. In fact, Christianity in America is really, uh, you know, being portrayed in a negative light. We are finally, you know, having more persecution here to Christians. There's a lot of mocking of God. As I've said before in my one uh, of my other videos, if you notice, they don't disparage any other God's names. It's always the name of Jesus Christ. And that um, name is the most threat because that is the one true God. And so uh, we're seeing that more and more, scoffing. So continuing on, it says, they deliberately forget that God made the heavens by the word of his command. And he brought the earth out of the water and surrounded it with water. Then he used the water to destroy the ancient world with a mighty flood. And by the same word, the present heavens and earth have been stored up for fire they are being kept for the day of judgment when ungodly people will be destroyed. So is he reminding us that the word has come true. God made the world with the word of God. He spoke it into existence. The flood of Noah's time brought destruction on the world except for Noah and his relatives. And so what he's saying is the word is predicting what's going to come and it will come because everything that he has said previously has been done so then it says but you must not forget this one thing dear friends a day is like a thousand years to the lord and a thousand years is like a day the lord isn't really being slow about his promise as some people think no he's being patient for your sake he does not want anyone to be destroyed, but wants everyone to repent. So stopping there, a lot of people use this specific verse in um, verse 8. A day is like a thousand years to the Lord and a thousand years is like a day. It doesn't mean that they kind of use this even as to justify the creation, like, oh, each day was a thousand years type of thing. It's just saying that God is eternal, so a day is no more different than a thousand years to him because God is not bound in time like we are. We humans are bound in time. So a thousand years to us seems like a huge amount of time where it's nothing to God. That is the point of that. So then it's going on to say that he's not being slow about his promise. He has it exactly when he wants it to happen. He's being patient for people's sake because he wants people to come to repentance. He's waiting to the specific time and he wants everyone to come to repentance. Of course, we know that that is not going to happen, but that's what he's waiting for. 
Then it goes on in verse 10. It says, but the day of the Lord will come as unexpectedly as a thief. Then the heavens will pass away with a terrible noise and the very elements themselves will disappear in fire and the earth and everything on it will found will be found to deserve judgment so no one is expecting a thief to break into the yard into their house it's kind of like i belong to that next door app and people are always shocked when like a thief broke into their house or tried to break into their car i've seen a lot of that lately and everyone's always surprised so it's saying the same thing here you're not really expecting a thief to come and break into your house it's a shock and so it will be just the same when christ comes back people will not be expecting it but he will do it he said he will and he will do it and then it goes on to say since everything around us is going to be destroyed like this what holy and godly lives you should live looking forward to the day of god and hurrying it along on that day he will set the heavens on fire and the elements will melt away in flames but we are looking forward to the new heavens and the new earth he has promised a world filled with god's righteousness so um basically since everything is going to be destroyed what kind of people what should we be we should be a people looking forward to the lord's return uh you know wanting him to come back quickly wanting him to redeem and uh judge this world that we look at the news every day in its utter wickedness um, I just got done reading news and was literally disgusted with 99.9% .9 of it. In fact, I don't think I read one good story. So there's a part of us in the Christians that long for, you know, judgment to come because it's just God's judgment is just because our world is wicked and the people in it. Um, and that includes us Christians who were once you know unsaved and lived by the same desires we are only saved by the grace of god and then it goes on to say and so dear friends while you are waiting for these things to happen make every effort to be found living peaceful lives that are pure and blameless in a sight so what do we do do while we're uh, waiting for this exactly right here live peaceful lives that are pure and blameless in his sight that would be following his word to the best of your availability and by the power of the holy spirit praying for others preaching the gospel um, living life abundantly with your family here um, loving others um, shining your light into this dark world so there's things that we can do while we're waiting and remember, our Lord's patience gives people time to be saved. Our Lord's patience gives people time to be saved. This is what our beloved brother Paul, the Apostle Paul, also wrote to you with the wisdom God gave him. Speaking of these things in all of his letters, some of his comments are hard to understand, and those who are ignorant and unstable have twisted his letters to mean something quite different just as they do with other parts of scripture and this will result in their destruction so the lord is waiting because he wants people to be saved we are part of that we are to be called to be uh, ministers of reconciliation and bringing the gospel to the lost with our words and actions and also he's going on to say that paul the, apost the great apostle paul spoke about the same things some of his things were difficult to understand he's talking about so people uh, twist the scriptures to mean what they want them to mean or in error and you know they're going to be judged for that and you know that's why you have to know what the bible says yourself if you don't understand it you ask the holy spirit for wisdom and he surely will guide you and, and guide you to the correct answer and the last thing it says in verse 17 and then i'll close i'm warning you ahead of time dear friends be on guard so that you will not be carried away by the errors of these wicked people and lose your own secure footing rather you must grow in the grace and knowledge of our lord and savior jesus christ all glory to him both now and forever amen 
that ends the uh, book of Second Peter. And so it's a good warning uh, because we, in seeing destruction around us, seeing so much temptation, seeing things, um, you know, we can get lured into those things because we are human also. So he says, be on guard so you're not carried away by the same errors of the wicked people that you see around them. Guard your heart, guard your eyes, guard your mind, guard your ear, guard your mouth, and uh, keep them. And it says, may you grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And that is my prayer for everyone that they would grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ because that is what will keep us from going away in error. I hope that you have a good rest of your day and I will um, talk to you on Monday. God bless.